This is Umar for Box Nation at the headquarters of, of Mr. Frank Warren. Well, uh, this is not an interview from 2016. Box Nation is coming back uh, across YouTube and socials. I'm joined by Frank Warren. Let's actually talk about that first. Um, Box Nation, some of the most uh, fondest memories of your career, Frank? Yeah, we had some great memories. It, you know, it was a product of its time. Um, those days when we launched it, it was all about the time when Sky were shine away from boxing and we decided to do our own thing and it served uh it did serve a purpose and i'm really delighted that it's back again but you can tell everybody more than i can what's going on there it's your baby <laughs> it's a good way of putting it well the otc platform of course isn't coming back um this is going to be across youtube and socials the youtube channel has 63,000 subscribers i believe at this point obviously we're looking to grow it and grow it um Great year for boxing we've got so far, and we're, we've only got the schedule till the, sort of the June mark. So uh, it's a good time to bring it back, and um, maybe who knows, one day the OTC platform might come back. But obviously, we've got all the, the archive of some of the legendary fights. That's the way to put it on there boxing. Were some great fights on there, and uh, as you say, that archive is very strong, and it'd be good to see some of those fights again. When you think of Box Nation, Frank, a couple of fights um, that you put on the platform, what sticks out? Uh, I think the first show we did at York Hall, that great fight of Appleby, and, and it was a that was a cracking show, real good, real good fight. And we had, you know, over the years we had some brilliant fights on there, some real good fighters come through. Um, I just, you know, it was it was really really enjoyable. I mean, we had some of the fights of the year, didn't we? We you go back, you go. I mean, you go back and look at some of the ones that were on there. <clears throat> they were they were epic fights, and they, it was a, it, for us. It was a, and not just British fights, fights from around the world. All the you know the early Mayweather, or in those days the Mayweather fights were on there, Canelo fights. Um, we did all of those. It was really the hub of boxing back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we done it. It was extremely, extremely good. So it's good to see see Box Nation resurrected. <laughs> Absolutely. In terms of the, the heritage that it carries, um, as you said, there was a lot of international content, but specifically within British boxing, um, one of the most recognised brands within within the sport, Box Nation. Well, it was. It built, it, we built, we built, built it as a brand, and, it, and it, not just in Britain, you know, it became quite recognised around the world because we had a lot of overseas, because we launched it as well in, in other areas. And... Uh, when we did our deal at the time with BT, where fights were, si were simultaneously broadcast on both their channel and us, and then BT asked that they have the exclusive, and that was sort of the change of um, the change of direction for us. And we and, and at the time, it's something we felt we had to do, and it's been proved right. You know, now BT's become TNT, and we're moving forward, and that's evolved, and w and will continue to evolve. But um, Box Nation has a place. And uh, it has a brand. It's a it's a well known brand, and I'm quite sure it'll go from strength to strength now. Mm. Let's hope so. Um, do you remember how many uh, subscribers it peaked at roughly? Box Nation. We had over one fight, but I think one fight but We we just done just over three hundred thousand, and that was that without hardly any advertising budget. You know, so when we started the channel, there was going to be a group of investors, and there were one of them was a Russian guy. Um, who didn't come up with the money despite sending us uh, emails and phoning us and texting us and telling us the money was on its way. And if you, I mean, you may not remember, but the early shows were, were broadcast free to air. Yeah. And that was to get, you know, to build up the brand and get the following before we turned it over to a subscription channel. And he fell by the wayside and left us in a bad position financially. We had to make, make up quite a big hole in the finances to get it going. And going, I look back to those shows. I remember, you know, the uh, uh, Cleverly and Bellew fight up in Liverpool and George Groves and... Um, De Gaulle. De Gaulle on the same card. That was a Box Nation show. And I remember that show, we had no... Uh, there was no... no uh, because, of, because of what happened with the Russian, it left us in a bit of a difficult position. Most people would have cancelled the show or didn't, and postponed it. How much we, did you have we, to fork we up? Out. We it, it, many millions, but <clears throat> we did it, and you know, cut the fighters. You know, we had to delay payments to a few people, not by a long time. You know, probably about three three weeks or so, longer. And that was a bit of um, that was a that was a tough time for us and everybody concerned. But we didn't cancel the show. 
we didn't do what most people had done and we and we persevered and then uh, we found other <coughs> a couple of other investors along with ourselves and we, we invested a lot of money a lot of our money in in the show and uh, Bill Ives late Bill Ives on uh, from Rain and Steel he was involved so it brings back a lot of fond memories a lot of fond memories and a real tough Tough environment, and it was exciting times. We did put together some great shows. Well, a couple of shows that, that stick out to me, which were really big domestic cards. Uh, of course, Upton Park, David A. and Derek Chisora. There you go. What a great that that was a that that done well for, as far as uh, numbers were concerned. That was a, a, a that was our first pay per view show. Yeah, and then obviously the 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 joint card with. Um, Billy Joe and Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. and Fury and Chisora. Yeah, great. Another really good, good show. Really good show. Well, yeah. that was a late finish that night, wasn't that it? Was wasn't it? I remember that. That was a bit of a pain in the ass, but get, but it was a it was a good show. Good fights on there, and uh, and it, that that fight with Billy Joe and uh, and Eubanks Chris Eubanks Jr. was a uh, was an exciting fight. Absolutely. Anyways, let's go to the to the present day, Frank. Um, let's start off with a really exciting new signing, Luke McCormack. Talk yeah. to me about that. Well, I'm delighted he's with us now, and uh, he'll be making his debut. He's he's, uh, he's highly highly regarded and highly thought of, and uh, I'm delighted he's on board with Queensbury. Hmm. Um, sort of, uh, have you got a, a date in mind to get him out, Luke? Um, we're working on that. He'll be out fairly soon, though. He'll be out fairly soon. So, um, as I say, I'm very pleased he's he's on board. Of course, there's a, a lot of hype around both the brothers. Um, got yeah. amazing amateur pedigree. How it, quickly can he move, Luke? Well, look, he's. He, he meets him with him. He's he's in a, he's a man in a hurry. There's no doubt about that. But we got you know got to temper it. He's been out. He's not had a fight for a long, long time. So we want to get him out, get him busy, and then uh, then hopefully um, uh, he'll, he'll get himself into a position where he's up challenging for a domestic title fairly soon. Okay, let's just go back to the uh, show you had at the Copper Box a couple of weeks ago. Um, the hype around Hamza Shiraz has really begun, I feel. That was a bit of a breakout moment, that fight with Liam Williams. Do you agree? I do. You know, I knew it was going to be a... I didn't think expect him to do that in one round. I, I honestly didn't. And I've, you know, I've had a lot of belief in him. And I've, you know, uh, from day one, you know, we've got behind him as a promotional organisation. But he's gone and done the business in the ring. And he's invested a lot in himself. He's got a good team around him. You know, for his dad, his trainer, Ricky, Taz, they've done a fabulous job between all of them. And uh, and what I mean by investment, he goes off into a training camp and it's quite expensive, the camp that he goes into, but it's paying dividends. And uh, he's just got better and better in every fight. And I, and I genuinely mean it. He does remind me, style-wise, of a Tommy Hearns. He's big, rangy, and, he's, and, he's, and he hurts with his punches. And he's he's got a tremendous tremendous jab. That jab is a powerful jab. You can see he's, he's switched round from, you know, from his uh, in his in his uh, his natural from his natural hand lead hand, and uh, and you could see that that jab he caught him with early caught Liam with early was a was quite a quite a telling moment in the fight whilst it lasted. How would you respond to people in the industry not not criticising that, but saying? That was a really good performance, but just let's slow down a little bit. We saw Chris Eubank Jr. drop Liam Williams a couple of times with a jab, etc. And, and there was a, a feeling that Liam's punch resistance has gone. But obviously, Chris Eubank Jr. didn't stop him. Hamza did with him one round. How do you respond to those people saying, let's not get too hyped up yet? I hear that. I'm not, I don't need to get hyped <laughs> up about it. I mean, I know what's, what I see. I don't need anybody, you know, I'm not influenced by anybody to, to say any different. It's how you do it. And it's how it was, and you know Liam was up for that fight. He fancied it. He trained like a. He trained really well. You know, had to look at him. He was fit as they come, but he just didn't get into the fight because he stamped on stamped his authority on the fight from the very first bell. And he would do that with most of the guys that he's weight in his weight division. He would do that. I mean, I really do fancy him against Eubanks. I fancy him big time in that fight. Mm. Okay. Have you made an offer to Wasserman? Uh, I think there was a t there's been some sort of preliminary talks, but I'd love to see that fight. I really would. Mm. I think it's a great fight for, great fight for the fans. I think it's a great fight for boxing, and I think it's a great fight for Hamza. I, as I say, I fancy him in the fight, and I think that you know both the guys are make some decent money for it as well. Well, I was going to say, look, Hamza's a, a guy who's on the rise. Eubank's been. Around for a while was obviously a, a massive he's name. That was he about thirty three now, isn't he? 
Yeah, he's been, yeah, he's but he's been around the scene for a while. Yeah, he's an yeah, established yeah, yeah. name, so he's obviously it's going to have to be the right price he's for been himself. A prospect for a long time. What, next gen. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they refer to him uh, still, I think, Chris. Uh, but look, what, yeah, my point is, look, it's it, it's going to be have have to be the right price for Chris Eubank Jr. Of course, you're going to have to put up with money but for it this. It does. I mean, you know, and and you know what, what's going to be said, but the, the fight would be naturally be a a, a, a big fight here because um, we would promote it that way. If we can do the fight, but I, I, I genuinely, genuinely um, believe in Hamza. I do believe in his ability, and you know he's he's a, he's a good quality operator, quality fighter, and well respected journalist and judges that I know in the business. They all they they, they seem to agree with what I'm saying. Well, talking about that, I saw Colin Hart's piece on Hamza, and he compared him not stylistically, but he said. He can be in the same bracket as your your Ricky Hattons, your Lennox yeah. Lewis's, your Amir Khan's. I'm talking about the, the the greatest fighters that have come out this side of the Atlantic. That's the sort of class he's, he's capable of winning a world title. What he's doing and the way he's going about it, he's looking good. I mean, that win he had in Poland, when we weren't against that was no that was no slouch. He was undefeated, the guy, and again done the business in the first round mm. and done it in style. And they fancied that. I mean, you know, he is managed by Krasik K2. I mean, they don't sign up, you know, mug fighters. I mean, that the guy was was he about seventeen or eighteen? I think yeah, he was good highly amateur ranked, background. great amateur record, and he'd done an absolute job on him. He destroyed him. They were they were shocked at that. They were very very shocked. Hmm. In terms of uh, domestic names, obviously Nathan Heaney, who's got a, f a good fight coming up against Brad Pauls a couple yep. of weeks in, in Birmingham, that is potentially there. But you talked about world titles, if. Janabek, top rank, um, his guys said, we're up for it. Would you put Hamza in that now? Yeah, I like that fight. I mean, I like, I do like that fight. It's not an easy fight. Don't get me wrong. It's, a, it's But, you know, I look at Denzel and the fight that he had against him. And Denzel, you know, we've said it in quite a few interviews, he gave away those first four rounds. He was sort of a bit hesitant to start with. But once he got into the fight after that, he, was, he held more than held his own and gave him a lot of problems. And had he had got moving from the first round onwards, I think he would have, he would have won the fight on points. Mm. I really do. So it's a you know, he he, he does have a he, you know he does has a have a good chance of beating him Hamza and we'll see what, what happens. But in the meantime I'm gonna keep him busy. He got Ramadan's coming up so he's out he's gonna be out of action obviously because of that. But as soon as uh, that's over and he gets back into training and so forth we we'll have a date for him and get him out in a real meaningful fight because that's what he wants, meaningful fights. Okay, good stuff. A couple of um, other things I want to pick off from that card. Sam Noakes, what can you say about oh. him? Do you know what? He's going from strength to strength and he's sort of, in some ways, what's he now? Is he 13, 14 and 0? Yeah, British champion, of course. British champion. And what? he stopped everybody. <laughs> I mean, he's, a, he's, an unbel he's like a dynamo. He's got so much, so much energy in a fight. He comes out and he just wears you down. And he's, it's relentless onslaught. And he's very clever at what he does. He's not just like somebody who just walks forward. He's clever. He make, he slips and slides. He gets his way in there. And he's very hurtful and very explosive with his, with his punches. And, you know, he's capable of winning a world title. You know, I really do like him. And, I like, and, and he's a nice guy, very, very nice guy. And I think, you know, Alan and Francis have done a brilliant job with him. Yeah, I know your son Francis managing is very, very excited about him. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you've got something potentially very special brewing at Cruiserweight with your two guys who had two wins. Let's talk about the first one. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't on the television broadcast, but it was on your YouTube channel on the Queensbury. Um, Alois Jr. with an incredible knockout. I'll tell you what, he's going from, again, he's going from strength to strength. He's exciting and he'll be getting TV exposure from now on. Oh, 100% and that's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, well, of course he will. He deserves it. I mean, he's done, he's doing the business in the ring. Sometimes, I mean, look, when you've got a show on, it's very difficult when you're trying to get everybody on the, on the, you know, on the TV. You can't do it and you've got some off-air fights happening. But it's important they get on those cards to be seen. And even if it goes out on the YouTube channel, at least they're getting some exposure. But the fact, you know, the fans, him, and also the people from, you know, the various... Reporters who are there at the show, and also the uh, TV production people see it, you know, and, and 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 you get that which they've said to me. We want to, you know, we've got to get him on. We've got to make sure he gets some exposure, and he's done well for himself, and he will get the exposure. Now. Mm. 
His trainer, Ben Davison, who, of course, has worked with Tyson Fury, working with Anthony Joshua currently, said that Alloys is the most devastating punch he's had on the pads. Works with Lee Wood he as well, Ben. That, he said that, actually. Yeah. And, I, and I, heard, I heard that. I see that interview. And uh, that's quite a bit of, bit of a tribute for him, considering, you know, the, the punches that he has had on the, on the pads, you know, with AJ and with Tyson and various people. He's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a... That's a, a bit of a... A statement to make on his behalf, mm. and of course Tommy Fletcher won on that card as well. Box really well, box well, Tommy. And he started off like that, didn't he? Started off on the card, you know, worked his way through, and he's and he's he's now get, getting getting uh, the exposure he quite rightly deserves, and people are seeing, you know, what he what he's got. I, I like him a lot. I like him. He's a good fighter. How do you handle that situation, though? I know you you've not been shy in the past of putting your guys in together, but there's two big talents there. Look, when do you match them we together? We build it. We build it for a big fight, so that when they do fight each other, that they can make the make the best money they can from the fight, and it's a, and it's the right time. Um, and like I always say, it's not the end of the world for the one who loses. And come again. We did it as we mentioned earlier on in this interview with George Groves and uh, James DeGale very early in their careers put them mm. together. Mm. OK, let's move on to uh, Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. I um, want to start off with the the undercard, actually. Um, incredible 50-50 fight on the uh, chief support with uh, your guy, Shilai Zhang, yep. and Joseph Parker. Um, wouldn't have really thought this would happen after Joe Joyce knocked out Joseph Parker, but the way he's come back beating Deontay Wilder, Zhang's two wins over, over Joyce, this is a... This is a proper fight. It is a proper fight, and it's a very you know it's a, it's a fight I'm certainly looking forward to, and it also shows that it's not the end of the world a defeat. You know, as you said, Joe got beat. Joe uh, Parker got beat by Joe Joyce, and then Joe Joyce gets beaten by Zhang. It's quite a you know shows that if you keep persevering and you have got self belief, you can get yourself back in it again, and that's what they've done. Uh, and I think uh, Zhang made a, made a bit of a statement over here, didn't he? These two wins over Joe. He was very unlucky in his fight with Hergovic. So, you know, that's going to be a tough fight, a tough fight for Joe Parker. But Joe Parker looked superb in his last fight. He'd done a, he'd done a great job. I've seen there's a, a rematch clause in, in place for that if, if Parker wins, but obviously that's pretty standard given Zhang's yeah. interim situation Correct, with WBO. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. If, if Zhang is to beat Parker, obviously you handle his career, does does he wait around for that world title shot? Do you get him another big fight? How, how do you manage well, you that? You see what happens. I mean, the two guys are going to fight each other um, on May the eighteenth uh, for you know, the first time. Sorry, May. oh, you mean Fury? Fury yeah, yeah, May, May the eighteenth. Yeah. May the eighteenth. Yeah, they're going to fight each other, and then the fight, the title will be unified, but it'll be unified very briefly because the IBF will then the next day say that yeah. Hergovic has got to fight who's ever around and uh, sorry who's the number two and the number two at this moment in time is Joshua mm. so we'll see what happens with that I mean you know AJ's got to come through his fight which we, I'm sure we'll speak in a moment um, against uh, Nagano yeah. so we'll see where we are it's, 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 but it's, it's happening it's all bubbling the fights are occurring and which is which are leading to bigger and it seems better fights each time yeah we will discuss the main event of course but there's so much on this card um like it's, it's, it's easy to sort of lose it and it, it goes under the radar. But you've got, obviously, your guy Nick Ball going against Ray Vargas tough for the world fight. title. Tough it's fight. A tough fight, but I believe in Nick and he deserves his opportunity. Vargas is a very, very good fighter. It's a world title fight. And Nick's grabbed it with both hands. Paul Stevenson's done a brilliant job as a manager and a, a trainer for him. And uh, this is his moment. He's done everything that's been asked to him up to as yet. He's another... Guy, you know, he's another one who looks like he's powered by Duracell. He's got a tremendous work rate. He's fast. He's 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 hard to hit. You know, he's he's quite elusive and he finds his range really well. He gets in close, finds his range, and gets out again. He's a very intelligent boxer, and I'm looking for really, really looking forward to the fight. Well, we haven't got many world champions in this country. Obviously, Tyson, no, no. Lee Wood and, and Chris Billum-Smith. So, Nick Ball can join we a need, small we, club there. We, I'm quite sure this year we're going to see a few of them win world titles, a few of, our, a few of the Brits. Well, let's hope so. Uh, Mark Chamberlain, Gavin Gwynn. Yes, yeah, good fight. It's a good fight. I'm looking forward to that again. It's a great opportunity for Mark. Um, His Excellency specifically asked that he fights on the card. So, was that the name you were talking about when you said yeah. to, a while back there was someone that 
His and Excellency said, said and you were shocked. Well, we were sitting there. I was shocked. First of all, I didn't even the penny didn't drop. We was all sitting there, <laughs> and he said, "I want Chamberlain on," and we're thinking because we're thinking. I mean, with the great respect, you know, world title level. Yeah, yeah. Who, who? And we were going through all it, putting these on the big screen, putting these records up. No, not him, not him. And I'll manage him. So how <laughs> stupid am I? I'm sitting there and I went, Mark Chamberlain. Yeah, that's him. That's him, Mark Chamberlain. Yeah. So we got him on the phone. I said, Mark, I'm going. I said, let me call him and tell him. So I called him. I said, listen, you're, you're on. And I put His Excellency on him, and he was quite shocked. It was it was a nice moment in time, you know, for a boxer to sort of know that someone's looking at him. But that also shows about. He that he watches all these fights. He's you know he's into it. So it was a it was a nice moment, and I was so pleased for Mark. So now he's got to grasp that opportunity with both hands. Tough fight, but it'd be a good fight. I think that says a lot about the the Riyadh season and fighters like Mark Chamberlain who been most of his fights have been and we love the York call, but they've been at you know seven o'clock. Well, that's the level with the, the level you know that's because he's starting out. Of course, but even at this point to be getting a, a call, you know, or, or His Excellency saying. He, he picks him out. It shows you the opportunities yeah, that come around for these yeah, guys. Yeah, and if you, it just shows you if you if you're dedicated and you keep you know get your get your head down, you work hard, it can happen. Absolutely. Right. Let's talk about uh, the main event itself. You know Francis and Garner very well. After he gave your man a, an extremely good fight, um, how much danger is there for Anthony in this fight? Well, I think he showed in his last fight that he's a dangerous competitor, and uh, he can whack, he can punch. You know. If he catches AJ, I mean, who knows? He could knock him over. There's no doubt about that. Uh, AJ at least has some footage of him to look at. He's seen him in a fight. He knows what to expect. What, as I've said, and I'm probably repeating myself, what for me is going to be quite interesting is not what not how AJ deals with it, is how or what Nagano's learnt from his first fight. Yeah, he could improve. Uh, exactly. Has he has he improved? And you know what they both. They'll both be looking at what what they feel will be weaknesses of of each other, and it'll be uh, interesting to see who comes through. He's a very confident guy in Nagano. That I do know from you know the, from the press conferences and being around him, as it, and uh, as is AJ. So it's going to be interesting to see which one of them prevails. But it'll be exciting. What I find interesting, you know, when we announced Tyson fighting him, everyone was saying this is disgusting, this fight shouldn't be going on, it's a disgrace. And now everybody's looking at this fight and saying, I wonder if he catches him, will he go and so forth. Always knew he was a puncher, always felt that, always felt that was going to be the danger. What what surprised us all is that he could box a bit. I will say to that, though, of course, I know you had your views on it, but in terms of the rest of the public, we hadn't seen Nganu before in a boxing ring. He does that to the best heavyweight in the world. Of course, there's more credibility in this Well, fight. I agree with that, but but, you, but he was dismissed from the beginning like it was a nothing, like he was a YouTuber. That's what I, you know, he's fighting the world champ, he's not had a fight, but he, but it, this guy is a fighter. You know, that's what he does for a living. He's he's, he's He was UFC's uh, uh, un, uh, well, uh, unanimous... Uh, undisputed. Und, sorry, undisputed uh, champion. And as far as that was concerned, you knew that he could, you know, you knew he could punch. You know he's a competitor. You know he's a natural born, you know, he is a natural born competitor. That's what he wants to do. He's a win. That's what he's a champion. So I always felt against Tyson that it was going to be a tough fight for a few rounds until Tyson got his range and and basically took him out. I knew that work fighting him inside because of how how they fight the the uh, MMA. I knew that would be tough for anybody I mean you know AJ don't want to be fighting this guy on the inside that's for sure because you know you don't want to get an hold of him claiming hold of him because that, that, that that's that's what they do for a living it's um, but soon as Tyson when Tyson sort of settled down got his range got over the knockdown you know he, he then just started pulling away on points so it's going to be interesting to see now if um, it, it, you know what AJ what AJ how he'll tackle it and also as I mentioned earlier what Nagano's got at, gotten out of his first boxing event. We saw um, before Fury Usyk obviously got postponed to May 18th, we saw three broadcasters, the three main platforms in this country, uh, all putting that fight on. Yeah. Uh, for this one, we've got uh, DAZN pay-per-view and Sky pay-per-view doing this. So more cohesion, it's good to see. Yeah, absolutely. It's what it's all about. You know, the promoters are working together, so we need the TV companies to work together. And that, and that will be, I think, a regular occurrence this year. Just around um, the Joshua and Garnu fight, um, Simon Jordan made some comments on Talksport 
um, saying that it's embarrassing calling this heavyweight elite boxing. Why? Well, he's, he, he, well, he's what is elite boxing? He's obviously going on the, on the fact that you know, in Garnu's second fight uh, in professional boxing, first one was Fury, first one was Joshua. It's not like they're all lining up to fight in Garnu. That's his point. That's it. Well, they're lining up. I don't think they're lining up to fight him. Why are they lining up? I think most people are trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid him. Well, you know, you see him in action against Tyson. Do you think he would give most heavyweights in the in, in the in the in the world a problem? Off that performance, 100%, yeah. You would think so. So if you're in the top 10, you're an elite heavyweight. And if you're fighting somebody who's, who, who's put the lineal champion, the best heavyweight, actually put him on the floor, then you've got to give him some credibility for that. Look, you know, sometimes... You know, Simon's got, a, got a, Simon's an expert on everything. And that's it. What do I know about boxing? I know nothing. But in your opinion, we had this conversation a while back, actually, over the last year and a half and, and the point it's at now. I'm not just saying this, but the heavyweight division, I think, is on fire. From what I'm saying. it's on fire. It's on fire and, everybody, and everybody's jockeying into position to, to see what... Jockeying in position to be in position to see how it all, how it all sort of pans out after the 18th of May. That's an important fight. It's the most important heavyweight fight this century, and it was nearly ruined, nearly ruined in the early stage by Nagano. So what do you think their issue is then with heavyweight boxing at the moment? What I think is their... Heavy- what their issue is? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know and I don't understand it. I mean, it's it's been... Con- it has been, you know, what do you call... If you say anything, we're not allowed to have an opinion. They can have an opinion. We're not allowed to. If I say something, I'm childish. I think was this, was this well, yeah. That, well, that, what he says is that if you know, if you have an opinion on on Warren, you have an opinion on Hearn or Fury and Joshua, you get you get blocked, you get dismissed. Blocked by what? That's what that's what he was saying. Blocked, but, well, I don't understand what he means by blocked. Look, you, you know, if you're if you're on the if you're on the station and that's your opinion, and that that's that's fair enough. But when you when you come back at them, like I did with Adam Catterall, man, face to, man to man, they roll over. And then he comes out again with some more bullshit about it, you know, about the cut that Tyson had wasn't um, wasn't a timeline on it. How do we know it's real or words to that effect and so forth? And and with Simon, I had I I, I had words with him on that. I said, "What are you talking?" He said, "I don't agree." He said that. I said, "Well, you want to listen back to what he said? That's what he did say. I mean, you know, I'm not an idiot. I know what he said. And 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 by the way, I know it was." Because what we're saying is that what the statement we put out, because we're the promoters. Just picking this back up, uh, my light ran out, so I didn't want a, a, a shadier version of Frank Warren. Um, shady. <laughs> shadier version. Yeah. Slim shady. <laughs> um, so we were just That's discussing wild. there about uh, talk sport and the conversation you had with Simon Jordan off camera. Yeah, I had a call, call with him, and he just said to me that um, he didn't, what, what I said, Catterall. Adam Catterall said was was untrue, and that's that's not right. I'm not an idiot, and you know it was what he said. We we put a statement out saying Tyson Fury's out because he got a cut eye, sustained it in training, and a video went out of it. And then you know Adam Catterall said, "How do we know if this is real? There's no timeline on it, and all this, you know, all the alleg- like this alle- allegations he was making, or trying to you know add these conspiracy add to so-called conspiracy theories." And we put a statement out. So he's basically saying we're lying. So I said, well, that's slanderous. And if that's what it is, I'll take it the task on it. And what happened was they took it down. They took that down off of the... Uh, the video with Jermaine Pennant and Adam Catrell. They took Catrell. it down. Yeah. And they took it down for a reason. The reason they took it down is because of, because it was slanderous. And for him to say it's not, and then telling me that he's an expert on libel, like I've never been, in, I've never been involved in any libel actions in my life. And... You know, I've never won any libel cases, and I've never, you know, but what do I, what do I know? I know nothing, me. I know nothing. I'm a, I'm just a some mug promoter, and that's it. And, you know, we just bumble through life. Why everybody else knows more about our business than we do. His Excellency uh, said that he's never seen Tyson in, in shape like that. Of course, he was with him in in he cabinet. He wasn't. He was. Look, you only got to look at some of the things. He was in tremendous shape. Tremendous shape. 
you know, you've got to look at him now and, and you know, and you've got to look at the photos afterwards with the stitches in. They were stitches, by the way. They weren't drawn on. <laughs> and you look you looked at how hard he worked in that fight and, the, and you speak to the sparring partners, you know, a few of the sparring partners. I mean, Moses was out there. Moses was telling us he was in tremendous shape, as is everybody. And uh, it was, it was a, it's a shame. The most disappointed person uh, was Tyson because he... You know, training hard for that fight and everything he put into it, it's been postponed. But and I'm obviously U6 postponed, and he's like ma he's, his manager come out with some stupid stuff. I mean, I don't know what he was on. And now, uh, but but the fight's rescheduled. That happens. Tyson's very phil philosophical. I spoke to him uh, last week, and he's just getting on with it, and he just can't wait for the 18th, and the fight will take place on the 18th. Some of the, the remarks from, from Team Lucy would just address a couple. Um, Alex Crass, I think they're just probably playing mind games at this point. Uh, but but, but at, in their own on. minds, I mean, who cares? I mean, it's just stupid. Well, well Krasic said that that cut wasn't from that spa that we saw that video going around. Well, he's talking, talking out of his arse, isn't he? I mean, that's the end of it. And he's, you know, not, well, where, well, if it's not from that bit sparring, where is it from? What is it? The frying pan? <laughs> so, I mean, they, you know... It's got a cut. It happens. Two fights, two fights this year. Buatsi against Aziz. Got postponed because he's got, got injured last last year. Was it last November? Yep. The fight between Hamza and Liam. Liam got postponed because Hamza busted his hand up. There's millions of fights that happens to over the years. That's That's boxing. These guys are in there. They're sparring. They're throwing punches. So, you know, like you can bang your hands up. You can get caught. You can get cut. That's what happens in boxing. And this, this conspiracy nonsense and the people who feed into it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, to be honest, I, it, it's, it's, it's pathetic. And that's why, that's why when, you, when you, you know, I expect it off of, you know, some of the trolls and so forth. You get that. I get that. But people who are actually in the business should know better. Some of the journalists if you want to call them journalists, because on the strength of some of the things they say, it makes you wonder. And broadcasters, it's just ridiculous. It's, but it's pathetic. And Aegis, I would just have to ask you, Aegis, the manager, suggesting there's been a, a rift between Queensbury and Tyson. Well, it's news to me. What's, um, over what? He didn't, he didn't say. Well, I should have asked him. <laughs> well, I didn't speak to him. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I'm sure I will do soon anyway, Good Frank. Luck. yeah. <laughs> that that ten million forfeit's interesting though, isn't it? That His Excellency. Well, that, that, that's what it is, and uh, that's it. So he's getting, um, you know, that, that that's even more of a incentive for the fight. That, mm. that cut. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't agree to that if he weren't for the fact that um, he wants to fight. In terms of the fight itself, that cut, Frank, um, is in a is in a prime position for a southpaw jab. Um, obviously, Alexander Usyk is south open. Cut, cuts open. You know, cuts, cuts happen. I mean, I'll go back to the days of Henry Cooper. I mean, he used to bleed at press conferences. You know, you look at some of them and they're just bad, and that's what happens to him. You know, he lost his fight against uh, Cassius Clay at the yeah. time, having had a bad, bad cut. Um, over the years, they happen, but that, that's part of boxing. And, you know, they go to see, the boxers will go and see the best. Uh, plastic surgeon and so forth to help help it with the healing process um, but it's that's what it is and Tyson's going to have to get out there and control the fight mm. and that's what he do Tyson will beat him Tyson will beat Usyk in his recent fights I've, I've seen especially with the, the Dubois fight even the Joshua rematch um, does go to the referee and, and talk you know cry baby is that how well, you put it? To, well, of course he's a crybaby. He keeps calling to the referee. It's a crybaby. It's the referee's job to do that, not his job to do it. And he does it. He's done it as he's done it in a lot of fights, not just those two fights. But no one's picked up on it. I picked up on it from the beginning. I, as I said to you at the at the time. Daniel would go out, you watch him you watch him chip, you watched him uh, warming up for that fight. Everything was body, body, body. Now he's in with it. Now he's in with the professor. He's in with Tyson, who finds people's weaknesses mentally and physically. He's in with a man. He's in with somebody who's going to give him a problem. And I've got to tell you something. 
you know, Usyk's a good fighter and all that, but he didn't impress me against Derek Chisora. Not the way Tyson Fury dealt with Derek Chisora. Is that something that your team bring up at the rules meeting then, Frank, about the complaining Absolutely. to the ref? Absolutely. I don't want no crybaby. You know, we're, you know if he's going to do that, well, we're, when he goes in the corner, we haven't got no objection to taking Kleenex in the corner. But the fact of the matter is, he's, he does do it. He's got we've got a lot, a lot of previous for it, as an amateur as well. Okay. Uh, the WBC, Marisha Suleiman, is potentially um, wants video technology in for Fury Usyk. What do you think about that? Look, I, I don't like video technology in football. I don't like VAR. It's been chaos. Yeah. And it all pans out over the time. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, old, I'm old school. You know, you've got three judges there. Why don't we have 10 judges then? And why don't you have 20 judges? You keep, you know, where'd you go? Fights used to be in this country. When I started out, world title fights with the referee, refereed and gave the decision. There weren't judges at ringside. That's only come in over the last, I don't know, 30 odd years ago. But prior to that, British title fights, it was the referee who used to give the decision. So we got three judges. You know, how, how, just think back to the, the, the fight with Usyk and with um, Daniel. Yeah. So you got that fight. How long would, it was four minutes there, pissing around with them. The referee got it wrong. What I mean by got it wrong, even when he wanted to fight, he kept giving him more time, which he's not supposed to do. But the fact of the matter is, how long do you want? So what am I going to do? I'm going to run down. Can you run that back again? Look at this. Let's get the tape measure out. We'll be there forever. You snap decisions sometimes. And, 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 you know, we've seen it with goals in football. You can get it wrong, but it pans out after all. I've seen VAR decisions, because that's all the analogy for me is VAR. I've seen those decisions where they've gone, despite the fact that you felt, where they're, they're measuring it now with a bloody, like, a ruler. You know, is his, is his big toe over the line or whatever it is? You see him doing all this stuff. I don't want to see that in boxing. Where do we stop? But what, what if on that night he's looked at it, say there's a, a cap of three minutes and, and he gave Daniel, that said it was a legal shot and he stopped him. He but he complain. did, he made his mind up. Who's that? But look, so, okay, let's, let's follow that through. So Daniel gets him in trouble, hurts him to the body, did, holds it up for four minutes and during that four minutes and said, oh, that's so, uh, no, actually it wasn't a low blow. He hasn't counted him out. He's given him four minutes to recover. Mm. What use is that? It's no use, is it? So what I take from that is that you're against video well, technology what, what, coming Somebody in. could explain to me, the, I don't get that, because what is the use of that? If, if the referee, if it had been pointed out ringside, the referee, because it's the referee in football who goes to look at the monitor, yeah? So he goes and looks at the monitor, scratches his head, having given him four minutes to recover, and then says, oh, it was a legal blow. Well, oh, well thanks very much. He's stopped him. He's had four minutes to recover, and let's get on with the fight. I don't, what, would we want to be seeing that in fights? I don't. I want to see the momentum and the flow of the fight. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You can always order a rematch. You can always order rematches and things like that. You know, for, for maybe for accidental cuts, you know, when somebody's to clash your heads and that, yeah, but you can always refer to that and look at that. It's pretty quickly done. But I don't want to see him fights getting stopped and and I just don't want to see that happening. It's bad enough in football and look at the times they, and you look at rugby where they use it a lot, the big gaps you have in between the action and who wants to see that in boxing? And can you imagine where people spit gum shields out, you know, that mentality you've got, what you'll be looking for to get yourself if you're in a bit of trouble and complaining about a low blow, which isn't a low blow, and then you go and watch it and so forth. No, it's not for me, that. Not for you. Uh, something that might be for you is uh, Daniel Dubois v. Philip Pergovic. I love it. Let's do it. I love that fight. Has there been discussions around it or not? Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's all that's been at the moment, but I'd love that fight. Daniel wants it, and I certainly won't. What about in terms of Riyadh season, His Excellency? Do they like that fight? With well, Riyadh season, uh, it won't be till next, ne the next season, will it? If yeah. That comes but does His Excellency like? Have you talked to him about that fight or anything? Yeah. Well, I'm out there on our next week, so yeah. we've got quite a few things to talk about. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. Um, in terms of this, um, 
Matchroom v Queensbury 5v5. Will we learn more at the uh, press yeah. conference for Joshua and Garner? You will not, maybe not there, but maybe a separate press conference, but we're working on that. Right, OK. I was going to ask some questions around that, but if that's going to come out soon, we might as well leave that for then. Um, saw the British Boxing Board of Control um, approve um, <coughs> Dakers v Adelaide, two of your guys, yeah. um, for the English title um, on the condition that uh, Moses Talma um, is in with the winner next. So what's going on with that situation? I know Soul's fighting soon. Well, let's just get to that fight on first and we'll see what happens afterwards. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. See what happens afterwards. Okay. Um, saw Fabio Wardley's obviously taking his fight with Fraser yeah. Clark. I know he's a free agent. He'd worked on your show uh, or his previous fight with David Adelaide. So did you make any offers uh, to him and, and about working again? What, what was the situation? Yeah, I'd li I like Fabio. And, you know, we, we had good experience working with him and his team. And I'd love to get him, you know, if he comes through that fight, which he's got a great, a great chance of doing so, to get, get you know, get back him back on our shows. Last one, and I think people will be thinking, why has this not been asked yet? But um, You're going to ask it, what is yeah, it? Absolutely. I think the fight I actually want to see most this year, uh, Anthony Yard v Joshua Boatsy. Where are we currently? Well, we've been, there's talks going on and we want to get it on. You know, that's, that, that's it. That is the fight everybody wants to see. The heavyweight, sorry, the, uh, the light heavyweight division is at the moment is, the unification is on on the 1st of June and that's going to tie up. There's, there's, um, afterwards... Maybe there might be a rematch, who knows? But the fact of the matter is it's going to be certainly not until next, sep next, probably next October and November before any other voluntary defences or any defences are made. So in the meantime, we want to keep everybody busy. These two are at the top of their game. It's a great domestic bust-up and we should be making it. What's going to stop it? Nothing, I hope. Is it a pay-per-view fight, that one? Um, that depends, but nothing should stop the fight from happening. Okay. It's the expectation level of, of what the boxers expect to get paid. Is it, is it big enough, this fight, to have a dual broadcast or not? I, I, I don't want to see anything stand in the way of it happening. OK. Right, so if, if, the, if the offer was correct, then it was exclusively on yeah, Sky. Got, let's get our negotiating. Let's just get the two guys to agree to it, and if they, they more or less agree to it at ringside saying they both wanted to fight. So let's see if we can get it now done. Is, is George second. working on that with Boxer currently? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, he's been talking, having talks with him. He's having talks with him before the fight. Yeah. I've heard Sellers Park being mentioned for this. Anything to that? Or? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's Probably see. rather at the Emirates now. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I just want to see it on. I yeah. want to see it on. Let's get, the, let's get all that sorted out and then all the other stuff will fall into place. OK, Frank Warren, thank you very much for talking to Box Nation. It feels weird saying that, but I'll it be saying does, that plenty more times. And I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, it's good at the moment. Everything's good and my team's flying. Oh, let's not talk about... 25 goals. <laughs> let's not talk about 25 that. goals in five games. And there's me been moaning about why don't I get a striker. <laughs> yeah, what do you know, Frank? Danger. What do I know? It's typical. Right? See, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming like certain broadcasters. Thank I you know, very much. I know better than the professionals. <laughs>